Hey guys, how's it going? Coach Tyson from Ox Strength, and today we're going to be talking about what is technique and is it really important? So first things first, let's discuss what is technique and why is it important? First things first, technique is a really, really wide spectrum of thing because uh, unlike common knowledge that we have to keep our chest up, our lower back cannot round, our knees should not extend, uh, we shouldn't be squatting too wide because you'll tear your abductors. All of these things are things of the past and then we really have to understand what it actually means. And like I said, it's a really, really wide spectrum of things that we'll talk about uh, as we go along. And to talk about, is it really important? Yes, it's really, really important, but it does not have to look like your conventional technique on your textbook, right? So what do I mean by that? So if we're gonna talk about powerlifting sense, right? The perfect technique is the one that abides by the rules of the competition that your hips have to be on the bench, you have to squat below parallel, your chest has, the barbell has to touch the barbell at your chest, uh, you cannot sink the bar too low or have downward movement or uh, the bar cannot sway uh, in a certain direction, your knees need to be extended. All of these things are from a powerlifting sense and if you're competing in powerlifting, if you fall within the rules, you have good technique for the sport and if you're not competing in the sport then we can still use our body and our symmetry uh, to understand whether your body is actually moving the most efficient way possible or not so if you're competing in a sport of powerlifting then it has to be within the rules if not then regardless of how it looks regardless of how tight your back is how up your chest is, how close your stance, how wide your stance. If you do not fall within those landmarks, then it's obviously not good technique. Uh, to talk about the body, because this is, I think, a really, really big uh, misconception that uh, we have to look a certain way. But the main purpose of a technique, the most efficient way in order for you to lift the most efficient weight is that we have to be able to manage the center of mass and how much we can hold it through the entire uh, range of motion and everybody's technique is gonna look a little bit uh, different. So I have the barbell here, so I will share you know, some of the things that different individuals might have uh, in a powerlifting setup. So I have a basic setup here, which uh, basically just trying to illustrate if I had longer hands, then I would uh, reach the bar much faster. Or if I had longer legs, then I basically had to uh, go down much lower in order to uh, grab the barbell. So whenever we're doing the deadlift, we know what a center of mass is, that whenever we're at the barbell, uh, we have to make sure that uh, our center of mass is managed while our shoulders are directly over the barbell. And then we stand up in a completely straight line. And uh, what about the lower back? So uh, in typical sense, we would ideally want to look at our deadlift sort of like uh, in a perfectly arched uh, position like that. But even with the lower back, right? So our lower back can go through uh, various different angles. And the, obviously the gravity is pulling our hips downwards like this. So typically people would say like, oh, this is a bad a position because your lower back is rounding and it will cause injury of your lower back but that's not the case so what about neutral so neutral most people would again think neutral is pretty good but then we're not not we're fighting against the gravity because the gravity is pulling our hips down like that as we apply force so we're fighting the gravity uh, in the opposite direction so is that really good technique if you look at it from uh, that perspective or if it's like over extended like that, over arched. Now people would say this is a good technique, but it's in limiting your ability to uh, perform quad drive, which is really, really important for the squat and the deadlift, obviously. So when your back is extended like that, you're also shortening your arms because if your hands were lower, you could reach uh, much lower. So in terms of the lower back, I would really say that like you have a big range where you can put your lower back and it does not have to be uh, the perfect neutral or if, if it's too tucked in then it's bad or like maybe it's extended uh, it's not uh, good or something around those lines so it could be a variety of different things and it will not cause you injury like the popular notion says uh, when you don't have the perfect textbook uh, technique you're gonna get injured uh, we hear things of this uh, sort a lot in the powerlifting uh, scene as well. Uh, if our center of mass is managed, then uh, we can have a proper technique. And with the lower back, we can have a range as long as it's fixed and it's not uh, causing too much of an issue. Because uh, oftentimes when you look at elite level lifters, 
there isn't a single elite level lifter who's got a uh, completely straight lower back, especially when, we're, when they're doing the conventional deadlift or even uh, the sumo deadlift up to a point. Uh, so that's a topic for the discussion. So I'm illustrating if there is a block and my hands are hypothetically longer, then I would get into a more of a neutral uh, position with my hands because in order to reach the barbell, I don't have to get down really, really low. So my lower back can be in a good place and I can look like I'm pretty upright when I'm deadlifting the barbell. But at the other end of the spectrum, not everybody is gifted with long arms for them to specially deadlift. So what if my legs were really, really long, but my arms were a bit shorter, the bar would be much further away from me, right? So let's try to do that. So now in order for me to get down to the barbell and maintain the center of mass that we talked about, uh, I cannot be in a perfect position like this with my back extended. So I have to reach much, much, much lower. And then when I reach much lower, when I try to pull the center of my, when I try to pull the barbell to the center and then pull, this would be sort of like my uh, position, like my hips uh, would be much higher than a typical uh, deadlift would look. But obviously if I were a good deadlifter, most likely that my hands would be, what do you say? Uh, longer and then uh, it favors the deadlift more but that doesn't mean everybody should look exactly the same you don't have to look like me and i don't have to look like you because we're managing the center of mass uh, another example which i cannot really illustrate for myself but if i had a longer torso right if my torso was much longer and uh, i had normal size uh, legs let's say or longer legs my torso would be somewhere around here right if i were to maintain the center of mass because my torso is so long i'm getting pushed forward so in order for me to so in order for me to get down to the barbell either i would literally use no legs like my deadlift would be something like this or i would significantly have to round my upper back lower back in order for me to get uh, slightly more closer to the barbell so uh, in these long torso cases is oftentimes that we see a much more compression uh, off the lower back just because we want to get directly uh, closer to the barbell by basically squatting down more and then uh, getting into the position a bit better so that we can utilize our quads and uh, our whole body. So yeah, that's how I would adapt for different sort of uh, deadlift basically to manage the center of mass and then we have to make sure that we're using the most amount of muscles that is required uh, in order to be in that position and how do we uh, manipulate our stance with our bench with uh, all of these uh, things based on our leverages so that we can move the most efficient way. So that would be a technique, a good technique I would say and then this definitely changes over time and then you have to uh, definitely address it with uh, different uh, tactics, different cues and all of these things in order to have a good deadlift. In the case of a squat, it would be uh, very similar as well. Let's say you have really, really long femurs and short torso, right? So your femurs are really long, so you would definitely get hinged back a lot more. But then, uh, and then obviously with the shorter torso, you cannot maintain the center of mass because as you can see, like you have really long, what do you say, long femur. So your center of mass would be somewhere there. So in order to hit that center of mass, you would be much more bent forward uh, in a squat. Whereas if you had shorter torso and then a really good uh, limbs uh, for the squat, then maybe uh, you could squat more like more upright because your torso, uh, your femurs don't have to travel that much forward and then your torso is long enough that even when it's like slightly bent, you're directly over the center of mass. So maybe a squat something like this, like a perfect uh, squatter would be. So we actually have to really identify our leverages in order to have a good technique. And it does not have to be a very conventional way of thinking uh, because even me being an advanced lifter and have been relatively healthy uh, for the longest period of time, every single uh, comment that I see is like how my technique isn't good when I'm doing the sumo deadlift and uh, when I uh, bench press like my, uh, I'm utilizing so much of my hips that my chest isn't growing, all of these things. And those people actually, they don't really know the real problem and they're hoping for others to basically get injured or like uh, just Ill, Ill, Ill wishes in a way. The perfect technique that you see on paper is not a perfect technique and that does not matter. But this thing really, really matters that you have to 
find it based on your leverage. Uh, so for the bench press, it's it's a bit different because in the bench press we don't have like a typical straight line of a center of mass. But what we're basically trying to do in the bench press is that we have a tension point somewhere around our neck, our upper back, upper scaps region, and then we're applying leg drive in order to maintain that uh, tension with our legs. So as much as uh, as long as we undrag the barbell and bring it down and then we're applying tension over there that is basically the center of mass so if that tension moves from your neck to your chest or your sternum that means we're uh, losing center of mass so for that to happen obviously you have to experiment with how wide you can go how close you can go if you cannot really arch and bring the barbell low then maybe a closer grip uh, would be beneficial for you so all of these things account so that is the actual definition no, not necessarily a definition of technique because uh, technique is a big spectrum like I said uh, in the starting of the video so uh, we can we have to find the best solution that allows our body to move its most efficient way and in terms of technique yes uh, like the conventional methods may uh, help prevent injuries a small degree but what is more important when it comes to injury uh, now uh, I'm getting into, I'm slightly going off track the video, but uh, because we relate technique and injury so much, like because of this uh, technique, like I could not, uh, I got injured or whatever. But oftentimes technique is really, 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 really dependent on load management. How much volume are you doing uh, on that single session, uh, in that single set? So uh, maybe you are doing one to eight with 85% or something uh, crazy, like it's pushing the single set uh, recoverable volume too high or maybe you're doing singles every single time with over your maxes or very very close to your max so technique mostly comes down to overloading and then doing too much and then you get hurt obviously even when we have a structured program that could happen because we're eventually trying to push as much as we can but injury is mostly from those other related things and while we improve our technique from you know finding our better center of mass management then we have the ability to even do more work so maybe i i, I maybe let's not say maybe i can for sure do more deadlifts with a rounded lower back and upper back maybe i can do four sets of four with you know 250 kgs or something like that but if i had the textbook perfect technique like with my sumo deadlift perfectly arched my knees uh, pointing out like that something like that then that would basically be impossible because uh, i'm not efficient in that movement pattern and that could cause injury so a proper technique will help you do more work but bad technique doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get injured does that make sense? So yeah, uh, I think that basically covers uh, what I had in mind uh, for this video. And let me know if you guys uh, found it helpful or maybe you can apply it to your own training. And like always, if you don't know what we're talking about, if you take one-on-one -on -one coaching with us, we will identify your leverages for you. We will see how you can be the best athlete and move the most efficient way and then find a way to train hard uh, slowly over time which is the most important thing rather than just applying pressure into a single uh, stupid reason or just loading the barbell or something uh, like that so yeah uh, you can definitely join one-on-one -on -one coaching with myself other coaches in the team you can take customized training templates we will still provide you with some feedback i'll give you videos like this on early access and all of those things so thank you guys so much for watching see you in the next one until then, be strong.